Okay, so we have so much to talk about. Tremaine is out this tomorrow. This is dope, by the way. Thank you. This is dope. We're, this we're in Nessa's lounge. Uh, drinks will be here shortly. Yeah, thank you very much. The waitresses much. are coming. And maybe some caviar. Okay, well, I don't <laughs> eat caviar, but isn't that what rich yeah, people eat? Yeah, we could bring it out and <laughs> look at it. I don't eat it either. <laughs> I, dude, I haven't seen you. Uh, we were at Kaylani yeah, we supporting. Yeah, we but we haven't had a yeah. chance to sit down and like, chop it up, really, though. And now you have the album. It's getting album. ready to drop. Yeah. That's seventh album, right? Yeah, it's out. Wow. Seven. Seven. Are you tired? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I love it the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. The passion for making music is uh, very much ignited. Uh, this album, uh, just being able to, in a time where I feel like the music I make is uh, is needed. You know what I mean? Right. When I feel like, uh, you know, it's less aspirations for people to sing r&b or less yeah. r&b considered mainstream when you know i was falling in love with r&b it was still number one hot 100 records right you know what i mean uh it was it was everything that uh you know the radio was just as much r&b as it was hip-hop right now hip-hop is everything hip-hop pop r&b is meshed with the hip-hop the pop is meshed with which is a beautiful thing because right. it, it it shows diversity but at the same time like the 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 sensuality, the love, the flirtation, the, right. the vibes that R and B gave you, I think, is missing from the radio and missing from so many people's lives. So, what's left for you? Who do you want to work with? I feel like you've worked with I whoever mean, you wanted really to. About that, it's as much as it used to be, like, oh man, I can't wait to do this or do that. It's really about, you know, just being happy with the music I make, being happy with uh, myself as a person. Furthermore, yeah. uh, being real with myself. Uh, if you think about you know, some of the singles I put out, it's a lot of self-reflection in, in records yeah. like Nobody Else But You and Playboy and, you know, just really being vulnerable with my fan base about where where I am in my life, what, what I think about, whether it be something that's a, a thought in passing or something that holds on to me, you know yeah. what I mean? Just sharing. Do you get f ever frustrated that you feel sometimes people aren't paying attention to the actual work versus they see a performance and, right. you know, you're upset with... Listen, people don't understand. When I saw the video clip of you performing and being upset, you are a perfectionist. Right. You love what you do. And I automatically was like, something must have happened right. for you to be upset. Right. And I think people forget, like, well, this I isn't mean, just anybody, a job. Anybody that, you know... Uh puts their passion, their devotion, yes. their, their love, their time, yes. you know, dedication into, uh, you know, you're going to get upset about that from time to time. You're going to get, and not only upset, you're going to have every emotion about what it is that you do when you really love it. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to cry sometimes about it. You're going you're gonna to get angry sometimes. You're going to be really happy about it. But it's going to be times that you're very upset, yeah. whether it be... Uh, in the way somebody perceives your music, whether it be your mic getting cut off, yeah. whether it be you playing your music for an executive and they saying, I don't think that's it. You know what I mean? <sighs> it's it's so many things as far as artists concerned. So when we speak about like working with people or like what's left, it's so much more left because I'm still finding myself. You know what I mean? So as I make music and continue to make music, I, I just, I just want to be true to me as a person. Do you feel like being so vulnerable on a song makes people question how strong you are, right? They're like, oh, yeah. he's just an R&B guy, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I think that's been a perception that, you know, people from yeah. the outside looking in have of R&B singers. Uh, I think that's just the way culture is. And it's, 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 it's very ignorant in any case because you can look at anybody right. and, and judge the being that they are, the strength of their character, the strength of them uh, in, in any way, shape, or form by what they do for you to see. But that's a human being. That's a man. That's a woman. You don't know them. Yeah. You know what I mean? People, especially myself, I give you what I want you to see. Yeah. For so much of my career, right. you, you've seen what I want you to see. So the perception you have of me nine times out of ten is what I want you to. I want you to think I'm an R&B singer because I'm an R&B singer. But in real life, I'm a man. And boy, you can get these hands. No, I'm just oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was going to say. I know that side of you. Like, when everyone's like, oh, he's so sweet. I'm like, yeah, he is if he wants to be, right. I'm sure. You know, like, yeah. But I just think, you know, a lot of times that there's always that perception. Yeah. That, like, oh. I mean, we are human beings. And right. the thing that human beings forget about other human beings is that uh, life is an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. And you are never the same person 100% of the time. Yeah. Different things make you act different ways, right or wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? We all entitled to what it is that 
uh, we do to handle with, handle situations. But for someone to judge any situation without having every detail right. of it is is simply like it's not intelligent. It's not healthy. More right. than it, anything. Exactly. Furthermore, to be that involved and worried about somebody is not healthy. That, Absolutely. That, that does not affect your life. So in the same token, whereas though is this and that going on, I can't let myself get lost in that so much because it really don't dictate my life what somebody thinks of me in uh in transit. Yeah. Like because it's really like a drive through thought. Yeah. It's not like you sitting there and you eating and you right. gonna have a meal over and it's all yeah. it's like, oh, he's crazy. Oh, yeah. he, he put a no, new song out? Oh, that's dope. What's yeah. the video? Oh, he's crazy again. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's an in transit thought. So yeah. you can't spend too much time on it because people are not spending too much time on it. Being in the industry for how long you've been and been doing this day in, day out, does it, do your feelings get hurt when, I know you already talked about the situation with Kiki, but I think people don't realize you're still human. Right. Does it hurt your feelings and do you just be like, God, I, I just wish this wasn't this way? Or do you have to just kind of like... I mean, your feelings get hurt in situations where people let you down. Yeah. Uh, or people, you know, take your name to, you know, do whatever for right. their success. A lot of people don't realize Kiki said I... Well, she said I just sexually intimidated her on International Women's Day when the most women marched in the world. Yeah. On a video that came out a week before. On the day that her book announcement came out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so myself, I could have my feelings be hurt by that, or I could realize that that's what she on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I reached out, said you could call me. I got to put that past me. You know, the thing about it is God will show you who certain people are. And if you really bait on that and try to bring them back in your life or try to fix it, or you going against the grain. Like, I pray and I ask God to show me what's what. The way that he showed me, right. I got to be smart enough to see it. Like, oh, the signs are always right. there. You can't go and say, right. oh, but God, oh, oh, but come back. Am I, you disrespecting me. Yeah. You, you throwing dirt on my name, but I need you to, I need to make this right with you. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know I what I mean? It's no bad blood. It's cool. Like, right. you go about your life, I go about mine. But what I think we as a people get too engulfed in is what everybody else has to say about it. Like, yeah. your life is yours to live. And when you let the voices of others drown out your inner voice, mm. When you let them start to talk and they start dictating how you move, you got to stand out. You got to you gotta be strong within yourself. Yeah. Do you feel like you get this because you, you're so close with your mom? You know what I mean? Like that you that. feel like, all right, I got the right people around me. Right. I'm good. Like, I don't need to question, you know, I don't need to validate I myself. I feel like my mother is probably the cornerstone for so much of my strength. Yeah. Just, of the character that I that I have, the way I think, my thought process. My mother's the first uh, person in my, my family to graduate high school, first college educated person. Wow. Uh, and she, was, she wasn't she was supposed to, like, she was a good girl in school. My mother, a lot of people, and I hate, you know, sometimes telling her business, but for real, my, the first time my mother was intimate with a man, she got pregnant with me. Wow. Like, my mother was, you know, top of her class. So she was oh shamed when she was... She was pregnant. Uh, and my name is Tremaine Alden Nevison because my mother used to babysit a little boy named Alden. Yeah. When she was pregnant with me. And, uh, oh. and she actually, I forget what exactly the doctor told us, but I don't know if it was the bronchitis or, or whatever condition uh, she had at the time uh, that would put her life in danger if she had me too. So my mother named me Tremaine Alden because the little boy she took care of every right. day, you know, he he just showed her what life could be with, yeah. with a child. So uh, just to go on further, like my mom, she she just sacrificed so much of her life and me being a young man. It, it took it took a little while to notice that. Yeah. You know, because I was a hard headed little boy from time to time. <laughs> I, I was good, but I, I I didn't realize like all my mother was doing for us. So as I became a man, uh, and I knew what it was to to have respect and to see, to have resilience. And I seen my mother in situations, like I never seen my mother cry till I was a grown man. Really? Like, you know what I mean? So uh, I got the strength that my father could never give me from my mother because I don't view my father as strong because we ain't even still had, he ain't been able to talk to me about what's going on with us. And we we communicate and I love him. Yeah. And I see my father, I see so much of myself in him. But the strength my mother has uh, supersedes that by, Anything that he could have given me, I feel. Wow. I I just, I love 
the relationship you have with your mom. I think I just it just it's so commendable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's the reason why you've been so grounded in this industry. And uh, a lot going, of a lot of the thing and up to now to this point, probably the last and I had to have a conversation with my mom. I said, Mom, I'm really getting just tired. Like it's a lot going on and sometimes I ain't I can't act the way you told me to. You know what I mean? Like I got I got pressure on me. It's yeah. coming from everywhere and I might act a little crazy sometimes. She said, Okay, long as you know, my mama thought I was tripping for a little bit. Like yeah. Detroit, <laughs> fuck the police, all this, <laughs> like uh all type of everything was going on. Uh and she she uh she was worried about me. But it's because of her for so long that I ain't never want to disappoint my mama. So in certain situations where I want to go crazy and stick up for myself and, right. you know, disrespect this person because they did me wrong, it was her the first thought. But now, you know, it's 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 really just autopilot. It's not worth my energy, not worth my time most of the time. But uh, I'm, I'm, I just love her for, you know, loving me unconditionally and making sure that I'm good. I've noticed that you have a bunch of pictures of your nieces and nephews and they're just... When are you gonna have kids, man? I feel like your mom wants another grandbaby. <laughs> oh, she definitely she been wanting a grandbaby <laughs> before she ever had one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to just have kids, like you know. I, I feel wanna, that, of I, course. I, like I could have had children by now if it was just a thing. Like, oh, I want a little me running around. Right. Uh, I feel like that's irresponsible, and uh, I want to be able to be there. Like, I feel like honestly, when I do have a child, like I can't say this for certain, but I'm not going to be worried about making music. I'm not going to yeah. be worried about, you know, as much as I love my fans, I'm not going to be, you know, I want to be in a situation where I'm financially set up to where I can take care of my family and I can live life and watch my child grow, like, and be there and be a part of that. If if music plays a part in that at some point, but the first, however, I want to see all that. Like, I was, I show, I fly tirelessly, tirelessly back to see my nephew for yeah. 12 hours if I can. My oh niece my for gosh. three hours, like, my little brother has co-parenting, so yeah, he it, sometimes I I can't go back when they had a baby. Yeah. So like last week we did a whole bunch of promo, and uh, it was my niece's birthday as well. I had one day. That one day was all I had, and I had to fly. I had to get on two planes to get there. I had to get on two planes to get out to go to London. We started promo as soon as we got there. But I'm about my family like that, so I feel like uh, I, having a child is gonna change my life and I know a lot of people depend on me mm -hmm. uh, uh, and as far as my business is concerned I want to make sure that everything is in a good place before like and you you know God said you can't plan for everything but if I could plan for a child to be in a in a great situation with a family where like I've seen that, do work. that you want to get married first yeah, I think that's I think that's the, the way whether I get married first is is something that I, I can't say that I will right. or won't I would I would like to right I also uh, would like to think that if I'm in love with somebody and I have a child, it's as strong as being married. Right. You know, in God's eyes, of course, you want to you want to lock that bond. Right. But me being a man, a man very much in the world and knowing how this world works and maneuvers, I feel like me being in love with somebody, having a child would be strong enough for me to slow. Yeah. Down. Not only the way I move in my lifestyle as just as, as a young man having fun. Yeah. But the way I work. Yeah. Do you see yourself slowing down anytime soon, Trey? Because I I know you are enjoying life mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> having fun. But do you see it happening anytime soon? I mean, I'm planning on it. Yeah. Like I said, and I have to uh, ready myself for it. Like yeah. like I said, like I pray to God for certain things and. As as they show themselves, I might not be so quick to see it sometimes. Right. Like, oh, I might act against it. You know, just me being honest with myself. Uh, but me looking in the mirror and saying, "You tripping?" You know, what I mean, that's yep. that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. So, however long the process is for me to open my, and, and I'm not ever in a place where it's like, "Oh God, I need somebody to love so bad." <laughs> I'm desperate, uh, but I do need somebody there that I know is my backbone that. You know, I, that got me through thick and thin that I'm not worried about. Uh, I could strip down to my, my bare self in my spirit and just be who I am with you. And, and that's yeah. okay. I can give you that to hold and handle. I'm very protective of very 
of so many parts of myself. Like, oh, you have to be. Yeah. You and so even when, be. even in the beginning phases of getting to know somebody, you, you think about it as an entertainer moving around city to city to city. When you do see somebody, you see them in such at times where you almost suffocate one another because, right. you, you know, you you traveling and, and you talking to each other, but you go from not being in each other's physical presence to this. Yes. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's different. So that means you're still checking your DMs. <laughs> and you're having car like I mean you know do do you still check them like if someone I, wants to talk to you no, I check my DMs for all type like I actually like this morning I, I a fan hit me in the DM like I check my DMs for so many things like of course it's baddies in there like yeah of course, of course you know but uh, that's probably just my ego at this point <laughs> <laughs> just looking like who's in the DM yeah. <laughs> but, but but yeah. mainly when I'm in the DMs I'm I'm looking for somebody I could I could kind of really kick some knowledge to like it's like for instance and it's some it's a kid i follow i've never met before in norfolk this is just off the top of my head i may do this two three times a day uh sincere for him yeah is his app and i see him and he's always singing and he has this amazing voice and it's a, it's another it's another kid that goes to school with him uh, uh gifted hands and I'll see something, uh, and I'll just drop them a line of encouragement, like, bro, that. your voice is crazy right here. The harmonies are dope. You should make a, re they did a, a remake of Candy Rain over, and I was like, this sounds good. Like, cause the other music they were, they were doing was up tempo, it was cool, right. like it was, it was fun. But I, I noticed that he sounded so good in this song format. Like, you should do more stuff like this. Or Gifted Hands, like, shoot some shoot some e uh, beats to this email, because I see they, them follow me, and they're, they're in my comments. So, uh, Did they lose it? Were they like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, definitely. They had to all, right? It's like, yeah, but what? I think I think, uh, I think social, network is, social networking is so dope in that form. Yeah. Uh, and it's so toxic in other forms. So right. you just got to walk the line. And, uh, and most mostly for myself i just got to be honest with what i want and the direction i take to get there because right. you could say you want something but you're taking a long way like it's mm -hmm. a better way you know what i mean so that's the part where i am with myself honestly yeah. would you ever do reality tv because everyone thought for a minute when they saw yeah. tremaine the, Play the playboy they're like oh my god he's doing reality tvs is this something uh, you would reality do? tv uh was never something that I, I ever wanted to do like even when we uh like you remember years ago i did that uh, docuseries on bet yes uh, I've always felt that if I'm going to kind of exploit my life uh, for greater gain, whether it be profit or whether it be television, it's always going to be profit because it's, I'm working. You know yeah. what I mean? So in or, it, rather than to do something like that, where I feel is like pulling culture down sometimes because uh, it's exploitation of drama. Right. Uh, you know, so so many negatives turned into a positive because of dollar signs. Just straight lies. Nobody's really looking for love. Yeah. Uh, the girls, the guy, <laughs> nobody. So, like, the, the docuseries with BET, it was important for me to be informative and to educate and to really show people, you know, my grind to be successful and teach people something and motivate them versus just a look in on, you know, who I'm kicking it with. Right. Right. So, uh, like, VH1, they got so many... Uh, so many emails and just respond to the executives up there. We actually sat with them and we just, as we were going through the plan to create the mock reality show. Right. Uh, they were excited about the people that were contacting them. So, of course, they came and was like, would, would you actually do this? Yeah. And I was like, uh, no, not this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we could figure something out. But if, we could do if, something now. Yeah, if, if it's something empowering, if it's something intelligent, if it's something that's, you know, that's special. Like, And that's the reason why I chose this path to even bring the album out uh first of all it was different and it was special and it was innovative for me yeah but it also where a lot of people don't see the the the, the huge the big footnote is that people will click on some drama before they click on something positive so if you gonna get money off the rumors and you gonna get hits off the bs mm -hmm. then i'm gonna get me some too i'm gonna have me some fun too y'all thought i was doing a reality show yeah. nope i'm not <laughs> this is my new single how do you like it do you yeah. love it do you hate it <laughs> <laughs> I love this though and I feel like even with other things when I, I remember when it was about people were saying that you had a sex tape out there and you were just making a joke out right. of it it's alright yeah it's, it's if you're gonna use my name for negativity then I'm gonna use it for positivity yeah yeah. if you can spin my name then I can spin it too I can spin whatever you're doing so I think it's just uh, and it's empowerment in yourself like knowing what can stand the test of time and knowing that uh, everything comes to pass yeah 
Like, quite honestly, like, if you can make it through the storm, like, I got a tattoo right here. If you can make it through the storm, the sun is shine. You it just got to make does. it through the storm. You just got to get You just got to make it through. You got to know it's going to pass. It might it be will. a long <laughs> It might be a long one. But it's going to happen. But you got to have faith that it's going to happen. When the whole situation with Nikki happened, and were you thrown off? Because, like, when I was watching the timeline and when you addressed it, I felt like you really just woke up. and <laughs> And you really were just saying, hey, I don't know what's going on. And then... The, the comment that was said to you and then you clear and then you really cleared it up with the video did you f obviously you did that because you really sincerely I mean, did not it's, know what's going on it's the the thing about that is i woke up and because my name been in so many headlines right. lately i'll wake up and start up start my day off with a piece of positivity from whatever negativity i i, I received mm. because if i wake up and there's uh there's this incident there's this incident there's this incident there's this 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 i gotta figure out a way to turn it into positivity for myself right so why not take the people on the ride with me so i get i wake up and i don't know what's going on right you know what i mean so i tweet yo no matter what you do to stay out the way they're gonna have your name in something not right. not knowing what my name is in but i know my name is in you're something getting ads. you're right i'm getting the ads. ads i'm getting the call my manager didn't call me a few <laughs> times so I, I, if you read my tweets, you yeah. go through the, the story with me. You yes. learn as I learn what happens. And uh, before I re before I realize, I'm like, look, this could get out of control, out of uh, out of control if you don't deny this, or right. you know, so because it's not true. So I immediately, and I didn't want to type it on Twitter. Right. So she must not have saw it. Right. And she's just looking at it, but. That was well before she tweeted me. Right. <laughs> so I was just offended at the fact that she would come at me like that when I had very clearly denied and yeah. in no way insinuated. Yeah. Yeah. So have you cool guys though. talked since? I don't know what Nikki doing, man. Yeah. I hope hopefully she hit me up. And you know what? It's good that you took the high road and you clarified it and it is what it is. Yeah, I mean I got respect for Nikki. Yeah. You know, uh, we did, we did a lot that of things together. Happy. That I mean, makes me happy how you handled it. No, we did a lot of things together. We went on tour together. We done made videos and music together. We done sold a lot of records together. Uh, I, I would never disrespect her or use her name for greater gain by disrespecting her. I love this. So it was just, uh, it was like, come yeah. on. You know, it's like, come on, stop playing. And give you a chance. Like, right. <laughs> like just read his <laughs> no, tweets. And the thing is, for real, like, if it would have been a man, I would have handled it a different way. Right. Because she, she tried to sum me. Yeah. Right. But you understand right. why. Yeah, yeah. And you were cool with it. No, I was and it's, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're but Nikki ain't giving me no six million plaques. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, yeah, I mean, I, th I feel like it's a, you know, it's both of you guys in it together. To, you Definitely. Know what I mean? You know, it's a, it's a group effort. So I want to talk about how you came out to Drake's show. Right. How was that? That was big. How was that moment? I'm, I'm, I don't know. That was know crazy. That was his been... eighth. That was his eighth show that night. Damn. So the the the, root, the energy in there was crazy. Uh, I I freaked out and saw it like we was walking through the back when we first got there, and like there was this van door open and I saw like this much of Shadi's face. Did you just almost I, die? I freaked out. Nobody saw it. I said that Shadi, Shadi, Shadi. So everybody's looking. They're like, where, where, where? I'm like, y'all is here. Is she just as beautiful <laughs> so in check person? So I got to tell you okay. the whole story. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so we moved through the back uh, backstage, whatever. Uh, we we just go greet people, boom, boom, boom. We go to the riser. The riser we're supposed to be in is too crowded. Uh, so we stand on the platform with the light designer. Uh, I'm watching the show. The show's about to start. And Sade comes stand next oh to me. Oh, my gosh. And I watched the whole show with Sade. Like, I went and performed and came back and... Was right there with Shade chilling. Uh, we started dancing, all type. It was the greatest moment. Like she gave me, she without even knowing was just dropping wisdom on me. Like she just in her regular dialect is just giving you jewels. So uh, outside of you know Drake and I uh, performing together for the first time in years, I have to say that it's in. It can't compete with watching the show <laughs> with Shade. It cannot at all. <laughs> mm -mm. Is she just as beautiful in person? Oh, she's even more beautiful. Like, uh, you know, she's, of course, a beautiful woman, but her spirit, her glow, her really? aura, her, like, is something that you can't even describe. Like, Who are some other people that have that glow, that feeling that you've ever come across that you're just like, wow? Oh, uh, man. It, that I don't just think anybody you. has the glow that she does. Really? No. <laughs> 
But that's why Drake got a tattoo of her. Yeah, I was like, I all right, this is real. I don't think anybody has the glow that she does. Uh, I think there are different vibes. There's different respect. There's different right. energy. Like, like Aretha Franklin, uh, being in her presence is very powerful. Really. Uh, but I've known I've known her. I've spoken to her. Um, the first time I met Aretha, I was like 18, 19. Oh my god! You know, so like a uh, few years back, I, I sat with her backstage at Essence before she performed. Yeah. And it was crazy energy because Shaka was performing oh the my. same night, and my mama was there. She's like, <laughs> "Bring your mama in." And, you know, we just sat in there. She's like, "Wow, you have grown up." You know, Aretha Franklin, she told me on my first CD I was going to make it. Like, <gasps> not to worry about nothing. You know, you sure going to make it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's it's a few different, or it's like, like Jay-Z sitting and, and being around Jay-Z and just knowing uh, how his mind works and having conversations with him and him being able to, you know, uh, like Jay-Z told me the first time I performed Say I in an in a arena, he said, he hit Kev. He said, "Can I, can I hit the, can I hit the young boy?" Yeah. I just wanna, I wanna give him some pointers, but I don't wanna. So, this is my first. Like I performed in radio shows, arenas, right. but this is my first big tour opening oh. up for Jay Z. And he just simple things like this that stay with me forever. That just remind me to check. He said, "Your show is crazy. Your voice is good. Your energy's up." But the one song, the song you guys gonna be a huge record, uh, say ah. You you just starting the record. Like you, you can't just start the record, like you gotta do something. So I said, uh, well what should I do? He said, That's for you to figure out. I said, Well I wanna uh I wanna pour champagne out every night. Yeah. You gonna give me some ace? <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a bottle of ace every Thank you. gave me a couple bottles of ace every night to uh to give out on the show. So it's moments like those and things like that that you actually why you live in it, you kind of, you appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, but it's so many that that I've had that are so special. Performing with Stevie Wonder. Oh, like, my You know gosh. what I mean? Like, it's just, uh, as you mentioned, it, it, it's a reminder to just embrace and really enjoy those moments. Never be too cool. Never, Never. be too cool to, to, to enjoy life for what it really is. And, you know, being a student of the game, I think yeah. just hearing this from you just shows, like, hanging out with Sade, you could tell you're still a student of the game, that you love this. Yeah, student of the game, and furthermore, like a student of life and student of myself, like, learning me. Uh, that's that's what, in, in, in naming this album Tremaine, like, you get, truthfully, you get pieces of that. You still don't get an entirety of that because I don't right. think 15 songs could ever embody my every thought. Right. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, learning myself and trying to be, you know, a better person than I was the other day while, you know, not being too hard on myself and loving life and learning to smile through the adversity and really just, you know, worrying about me and my path while helping those that I can help. After doing this for so long and you're doing videos, you know, and she loving it or whatnot, does it ever get awkward when you're doing those intimate scenes with the yeah, person they, in the video, the and thing is, you don't know these people. So, uh, <laughs> like, like, like okay. Krisha, like Krisha, I, I, I know her, uh, her producer, the producer she's actually signed to. Right. He produced Sayah. Yeah. Uh, so I was in support of her career and support right. of things she'd been doing. We we'd never met before. Uh, I know that she acted. I know that she's modeled before. I know that she's uh, an artist herself. So. Right. I thought she would be, excuse me, perfect for the role. Right. Uh, outside of her though, it's like twenty other girls. Yeah. So, and I'm directing the video, and it's a lot of people around, and it's a lot of it's, yeah. So it's just it's about first breaking that barrier to let them know that you know whatever you're uncomfortable with, you right? Let, and you we, you don't have to do it, right? Well, if you let somebody know you're uncomfortable with something, but it will be you you letting them know beforehand that this will be risque. This will be. You know, I want y'all yeah, to feel like it, it has to look real. I right. don't I don't want you here to be a video girl. I want you here to be an actress. This is what you aspire to be. This is what you right. say you want to be. I want you to do what an actress would do in a movie. Right. She would go, she would act and she would be professional and it would be that. Right. Um. So for me to direct the video, be in the video and, and uh, it's six, well, five videos over the course of six days. So right. we actually got time and we... Sh we planned things kind of so people could get comfortable as it went along. Right. Well, me and Creature, we actually met in the bed 
<laughs> that is so weird. But it's lights and it's cameras yes. and it's people doing your hair and it's just, you got like she got on pasties. It don't. It's not really what what it looked like. You know right, what I mean? Right. Right. It looks more intense. Right. Than it is. <laughs> but I'm sure. I just every time I see that, I just laugh because I'm like. It has to be weird. Yeah, it is. Because everyone's staring at you. You're like, oh, okay. I mean, well. I'm I'm more comfortable with it. So it's it's uh it's my first video where, you know, things got risque it was probably the last time on my second album. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first. Mm -hmm. So from there you go to the next album and Venice X Neighbors Know My Name and after that I'm good. Like do you feel like it's always pressure though? Like let's say you are dating someone and you feel like they always want you to be this person in a video. You're like, okay, relax. I'm not always gonna be silky all the time. Like, you know? Well, uh, the thing about me is I'm I'm probably 30% of that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> the sexy guy that's yeah. doing all that, I'm probably 30% him, right. if not 25. Word, you know, yeah. Cause I love to be funny, I love to be a fool. <laughs> like I love to have jokes and really just, uh, I'm I'm not sexy, sexy all the time <laughs> at all. <laughs> How annoying would that be? It'd be so annoying. It's, I think it's annoying that everybody like it. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all give me the coins, I'll be sexy. <laughs> that is so, that is hilarious. No, because it's funny though. It's also funny though, because people say, oh my God, you're so sexually this, that, and that, right. that, that. But then if I don't give you sexual music, it's like, oh my God, where's the bedroom playlist? Oh my God. Yeah. So you can't really worry about what people think. <laughs> you just got to do what you want to do. Do you ever listen to your songs while you're in while the I'm getting kinky no that's weird uh. yeah no like it's just no way like uh. I won't listen to anything especially because like I just one I'm cool You're with listen, everybody like yeah like I just and plus doing radio you just music uh, of the body yeah I just I don't want to hear no just songs. all your friends you need instrumentals uh, just instrumentals you maybe the, you need the water joint <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The, the little the chakra yeah. music. I don't yeah. want to hear anything, especially because in my mind, I'm like programming music. I'm like, oh, well, that's an A and this is no, a golden. Wind. That's so crazy you recognize on that level because when I'm listening to my music, that's the same problem I have. Right. I'm like, you should put harmony there. Like, yeah. oh, what, what's that <laughs> note? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or especially if it's, uh, you know, I, I once I complete an album, I hardly ever listen to it because I then go on to perform it. Yes. And it, it takes on a new life. But outside of that, it's really like I'm just giving it to the world and it's yours now so for me to listen to like if i do listen to even if i listen to my music like, yeah like just it, it's music that nobody's heard like if i'm riding Got in it. my car it's yeah. music that's not released yeah you know what i mean like today i'm riding around to the album i'll probably ride around to it this weekend and take it in that it's out and the world has it but i probably won't listen to it no more yeah <laughs> it's like weird like i I don't want to ever see myself on TV. Like when people are like, oh, do you watch stuff? I'm like, no, absolutely not. It's I, don't, a, you, I can tell uh, you something I've never told anybody. I, my, uh, I, when 2005, I, my girlfriend, her name was Helen, yeah. my ex-girlfriend, and she performed like all the time. She would be watching these tapes of herself, dancing with Chris Brown, dancing with Mariah and Keisha Cole. She danced with everybody. Right. And she just watched herself. And she's like, I got this video you perform. You want to watch it? I'm like, nah. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and for a while, for the longest time, I was so scared to watch myself perform that I feel like for there was a, a course of time where I never got better. Right. Because mm. I was scared to critique myself. I was scared mm. to see it. Right. So, uh, like, once again, just as you go through life, like, you, everything, you know, you got to change some of the things you do sometimes. And so now you watch your performances. Yeah, and, I yeah. watch them. I, I, I listen back to them. You know what I mean? And, uh. It, it's something that she wanted me to do a long time ago. I'm like, man, it's over. It's yeah. done. Hopefully I, <laughs> hopefully I killed it. <laughs> I hate looking. And furthermore, like, it's just like you got to spend time looking at you and yes. talking about you. And, uh. like, me as an artist and people, it, uh, you know, it, they say stay humble. And how do you appear to be humble for someone else? And even though I feel I'm very humble, I feel like sometimes I'm full of myself too. Yeah. But all I do is talk about myself and all day long. Yeah. Talk about myself, sit down, what you doing? Oh, I'm great, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Da, 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 da. So when I go back and look at myself and have to criticize myself, I'm done with myself. I want to go do something else. Like, I just did that. Like, I just lived that moment. I got to sit here and watch me live that moment. And yeah, it it because you know what you're probably so hard on yourself. Like I'm for so me, hard on myself. I pick everything apart. When I see myself, I'm like, okay, that 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 this is terrible. I suck. Right. That's like end of story. Turn. I I'm done. That's a picture in my album cover. I got two pieces of lint in my hair. You are crazy. 
It's so awesome. <laughs> but I understand this, but people who care about their art I was so looking much. looking at my photographer. He's like, where? I didn't see that. Yeah, he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Go look at it right now. The nobody else but you picture where I'm kissing on Cretia. And you got it's the lint. Two no, pieces of lint. No. Yeah, I look at everything. Like, you have to. <laughs> When, you know what, Trey, so being in this industry for so long, being cool with so many people, how do you deal when you see two friends that you might be cool with not getting along? Do you call them or, you know, I know you and Chris are great friends and, and you see things are going on. Do you do you do the solid thing and call them up and say, I hey. Mean, I, I stay out the way. Yeah. You know, because one thing about people in their conflicts, you got to get both sides of the story Right. You gotta, you gotta really like, especially people you care about. Like Chris, when anytime something happened with Chris, I call and check on. Him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether it seemed like it's something that I I agree with or I don't agree with, I don't know what happened. So I call, and uh, you know what's up? You good? Yeah. All right, just check and make sure. I love that. Making sure you good. Uh, when it comes to like, you know, men and them beefing or you know friends of mine's beefing, I let them work it out. Yeah. Because. I don't want to, I'm not going to take sides. I'm not going to, I'm my own man. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. You, you're you not going to have me not kicking it. I'm not, it's not high right. school. It's not, if you rock with him, you're not my friend. If you rock with him, like, I'm not in all that. Yeah. And I know most of the time, like, nothing ever happens when people beefing. Like, yeah. everybody beef, 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 beef. Nothing happens. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know, and I, it's so true. It's all talk. And then, you know what? Time. Time just usually right. heals everything. Yeah, time will definitely heal everything because it's so much rapid fire BS news. Every day, <laughs> every, every second. Every day that if you wait just a little bit, your story will pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your story, this little beef will pass. We will forget about it. And it, you could go back to being popping. Just make some yeah. <laughs> You know what, Trey? I always wanted to thank you for always supporting Colin. It means so much, not just to me, but to him. And, you know, I think a lot of times for artists, they're you know they, it's, they, it's, hey don't be political because yeah. you might lose your fan you base you might lose your fans but you you, you got to keep your integrity and you see what what Colin did like i ain't even think on along the lines of what he did he took a knee to stand yeah like in you know i've known Colin before that right you know, right but you know this gave me such a respect for him and to continuously 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 you know, while being disrespected, death threats. Yeah. Oh man. You know, uh, and to stand for a purpose, and not only stand for a purpose, but to continue, continue to use his voice, even when you got the the, the president of the United States speaking down on this man and, and trying not to get this man congratulating NFL owners are what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. You talk about a man that's doing great things for people in need. Yeah. I think it needs to be more people. Uh, speaking up and showing love for what it is he's doing uh and i know it's hard yeah and people have people have their own lives and you know i feel like one of the greatest things my mama told me is that when you do better you got to do better you know and you're doing better for yourself you have so many people uh that you can inform so many people that you can help so right. many people you feel something is uh, injustice and you let that be done without speaking on it then you're a part of the injustice so every time I see him accomplish something like yeah. the, the <laughs> 60 cargo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Like I went in his comp because I saw it the day before. Yeah. And I liked it. And I had a conversation with my mom about it. I'm like, Mom, Colin doing dope stuff. Like he just he just put up a, a, a message where, you know, he's trying to help the people. And literally like so fast. It feels like Hours. the next day I was yeah. like, oh, my God, he got a plane. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that just speaks to the the power of standing for something that speaks to the power of goodness yeah you know and especially when you have so many people trying to tear him down for what he's doing which you see the evil of the world oh, trying to yes. work so whenever the evil of the world is working you got to push through and continue to give that good message so i'm forever with kyle i'm you see I i'm growing my hair i'm about to start picking it out too <laughs> i mean you know kyle is trying to grow a little faster <laughs> <laughs> it's your girl. Y'all ain't know I was creeping up to do the collar. <laughs> I really, I need really... my fro big, so when I put my fist up, it, yes. it just it, it, it hit. It means so much. I have always, you know, when I saw the comment, when Colin saw the comment, we were just, I mean, when he's a fan, right? And but just to see you not be scared and to oh, cause God, to encourage it, God, because 
you know, the, the, the mistake that we can make is say, oh, uh, they scared to pick Colin to play football. Yeah. No, God has greater plans for him. That was the catalyst for him to use his voice. And if he plays football, and right. he's he going to be great at it. If yeah. not, he got to walk in that, and he's doing that so proudly. And so yes. you see the smile, and you see the joy in his heart. Although yeah. it also has to come with frustrations that people would never understand. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just to see that, and, and you got to support that, man, because he a brother like me, and yeah. it, it's lonely out here when you're going through things. Oh, man. So to the the, the the biggest pat on the back or, the you know, the smallest pat on the back. It's, it means it's, a lot. Yeah. Man, I couldn't, we were so happy that you were coming in. I just, I wanted to thank you. Yeah, I you've saw him before I saw me. you. I know, it was a surprise <laughs> for you. You've always been good to me, Trey. You've, for, for many years, you've always been so respectful, such a gentleman thank with me, you. and I appreciate it, and it means so much. And and now to see you and Colin connect is just it's family and I just it's thank dope. you. The man. synergy's amazing. Yeah, I, know, I love it. I know that's from the crazy hair. <laughs> yeah, to, right. <laughs> God, wait, oh, gosh, don't even remind me. But yeah, but, we used you to be know? in the Bay Wild. I remember our first interview. Like yeah. I remember everything. Like I remember when you first came to the station in the Bay. I remember yeah. when you first came out here. Like and, and you've always been good to, to, to me. take this full circle. Just very proud of you. I always thank told you, you when we first did yes. our interview. I told the program. I said she's special. Yep, I'll you know never, and that helped me. You know what I'm saying? And but you never forget people who are good to you, and you've always been good to me. And I, I love seeing your journey, and I'm just happy to call you family, Thanks, man. Ness. Thank you.